Hi, John Talley here with Partzilla.com. Today we're going to be looking at the carburetor on our 2007 Honda TRX 400EX. If, if you notice that your machine's getting harder to uh, start up in the morning, it's been sitting for a while, I mean, it only wants to run when you've, got, when you've got a little bit of throttle going to it, it'll just cut off when it's trying to idle. And that's a couple of indicators that you probably need to clean the carburetor. So what we're going to do is uh, walk you through the process on how to do that. It starts off with just pulling the fuel tank, getting the, uh, the intake boot and the air box out of the way, loosening up a couple of more clamps, then the whole carburetor will come off. I'll take it over to the bench, then we'll get it broken down. So let's jump straight into it. Turn off your fuel. Go ahead and remove your hose from the, uh, the fuel tank. First, we just need to remove these three 10 millimeter bolts, and this entire section will come out. That'll include the air box and the intake boot. Gives you a lot of room to work at that point. You could probably get the carburetor off without doing this but it's really not worth it. I mean, three bolts and all of that gets out of the way. Loosen up that boot clamp. Pull that breather box out of the way, out of that side tube right there. And now that whole section will just lift right off. Now what we're gonna do is loosen up the front clamp. All right, it's just a Phillips. Give it just a few turns, loosen it up, and she should pop right out, just like that. Now, we need to pull this cover right here so we can access the uh, throttle cable. Now, if you don't own one of these, you need to get one. It's an impact, and I've actually got a Phillips tip on there, because these little bolts are notorious for stripping out. That's all it takes to break them loose. And that'll expose the linkage and your cable. So just rotate that back, then lift the end of the cable out straight up through that groove, like that. Now, we just need to break loose that pinch bolt Looks like a 14 millimeter, and then we can unscrew the cable from the, uh, the carburetor housing itself. Put that broken loose. Now we just unscrew it. All right, with the carburetor off the machine, we're getting ready to break it down. I want to discuss a couple of different options we have for cleaning this up, depending on how bad it looks on the inside. I mean, if it's just got a light tinge of, uh, of green once we get the float bowl off, maybe one or just uh, of the jets are clogged up, I mean, you can probably use uh, uh, just a regular car um, carburetor cleaner for just removing, you know, some light buildup of gunk in there. Um, if it's more severe than that, where you're seeing a lot of tarnish or almost a tar-looking material in the bottom of the uh, float bowl, you may want to go ahead and uh, invest in some uh, carburetor cleaner. You can pick this up at any auto zone. Something Napa, something like that. Um, what I'm actually going to use is a uh, ultrasonic cleaning machine, which uh, I'll show you a little bit of footage of later. Um, what I'm going to do is go ahead and break it down, and then we're going to pull apart, pull it apart, take a look at each of the pieces inside of it, see if they can just be cleaned up, or if we just want to go ahead and replace it with a, um, a complete kit that we carry. Uh, this kit has all the uh, the different the jets, the different O-rings, the different seals, the different needle valves. I mean, everything you need to rebuild it from top to bottom. So let's start getting her pulled apart, and uh, we'll evaluate from there. The hoses, it's not mandatory to take them off. It won't hurt them to go in the, uh, the cleaner. I'm just going to pull them off to get them out of the way. As you're pulling them off, 
depending on the age of your machine, make sure that they're not cracked anywhere because that could give you a, uh, a vacuum leak and cause your machine not to run very well. All right, what you want to take of a note of right here is on the fuel line coming from the fuel tank, there's actually a little screen pre-filter right in there. So you want to make sure that that's clean, doesn't have any debris built up in it. Next piece we're going to be taking off is the accelerator pump down at the bottom of the carb. Check that out, make sure there's no tears or anything. That looks to be in pretty good shape. Now we're going to be taking off our float bowl. This one actually looks to be in pretty good shape, but we're going to go ahead and go through the, uh, the whole cleaning process anyway. Sometimes you'll open these up after they've been sitting for a while, and there'll just be a black honey-like tar sub substance in the bottom of the bowl. All right, the float bowl, which is right here, is just held in by a pivot pin. All you need to do is get right on the end of it. Just lightly tap it. That'll get it started. Now you'll notice here that there was a set of um, teeth or ribs, and that's the direction you want to push out, those little splines right there. You definitely want them to head on the outside. your float bowl and then there's your float needle. What you want to check here is to see if the end of that which is made out of rubber has a split in it anywhere. Once again this one looks to be in pretty good shape. But if you push on that tip you can see if it's torn. You're also looking to see if it has a you know just a large indention all the way around here that can cause a leak. And the other thing we need to take into account and take off is your air fuel mixture. All right, to do that, you need one of these little tools. It's kind of shaped like a D. But what we want to do is turn it back in first to see where our um, setting was. Now for this particular model, that should be two and a half turns. And that's where it was, two and a half. So knowing that, we can go ahead and back this all the way out. And it's going to have an o-ring and a spring on the end of this. There's your o-ring. And there's your spring. And you'll see the kit actually had a new one of those with it. Basically everything that you're going to see me take out of here is in this kit. So if this is all in really bad shape, instead of trying to clean it and blow it out, just get one of these kits and just replace all of it and be done with it. Once you get your air fuel adjustment needle out, then you've got your main here and then your idle jet, which is down in there. And that's typically the one that gets clogged up. And on this model, all you need to do to get it out is just a flat blade screwdriver. Like so. You can see that's really got a pretty small jet. If uh, when you look at it through a, a light to see if there's light coming through there, that'll tell you if it's clogged up or not. Next, we can go ahead and pull our main. What you're looking at there is your needle jet, which is uh, connected directly to your throttle. Now to get the slide and the, uh, the main needle jet out, just remove this uh, Phillips right there on its pivot pin for that arm. Eh, don't lose that little washer. Alright, then right here, I'm going to just lift that pin 
pull it through far enough to release that pivot like that. Now keep in mind there's a little thrust washer right there that we need to keep a, keep up with. So now we can lift out our main needle jet and the slider. One more thing to get off and then we can head over to the ultrasonic cleaner. All right, so what we're gonna put in the cleaner, of course, is the carburetor body, float bowl, and all our little jets we're gonna have in a little basket that'll go in there as well. So let's head over to the parts cleaner and uh, get this thing cleaned up. We've already got our heater turned on, so all we have to do is let's go ahead and put our little canister with all our small parts in it, jet needles, etc. Get the body in there, flip bowl, make sure the flip bowl's facing up so it doesn't have any air in it. And we're going to go ahead and flip her on, let it cook for about 30, 45 minutes, and then uh, we'll take a look at it. All right, guys, we've got everything out of the ultrasonic cleaner. Now what we need to do is spray down the individual passages with some uh, carburetor cleaner and uh, then get that blown out. So hopefully you haven't lost your little uh, straw here because it really comes in handy to get this done. All right, I'm going to go down into each place. That happened to be where the float needle went. And that's with your jet and that's with your main. And you want to make sure you've got on uh, some type of safety goggles because when this stuff spits up, you do not want to get it in your eyes. I promise you, because it burns like crazy. All that's looking good. The jet we want to look at in particular is the uh, the idle jet, because that's the one that always gets clogged up. Let's we'll see if we were successful in getting it cleaned. Use that straw. Yep, and that looks good. See, it went straight through it, and that's what we were looking for. All right, all of the jets really turned out well. That ultrasonic uh, machine does a, a fantastic job. So if, I'm not going to use the kit this time around, but if you don't want to go through the uh, or can't, don't have access to an ultrasonic cleaner or the, uh, the other cleaner didn't do a good enough job, I mean the kit's an uh, inexpensive alternative. You know, just go ahead and use it all the way through. All right, well let's start putting it back together. Start off with our, um, our pilot or idle jet. Then go ahead and put in our main. And this is just brass, so it doesn't take a lot to tighten it down. All right, from here I want to go ahead and get in our air mixture screw. Remember, this is the one that had a spring on it. And then on the other side of that spring, you have a washer followed by a small O-ring. All of that goes in there. All right, the way you adjust this one, because remember, we t before we took it out, we determined that it was uh, set to two and a half turns. So what you want to do is take it all the way in until it bottoms out. Don't over tighten it though. You just want it to bottom out and that's all. It's bottomed out. Now we're going to mark our tool to where we can keep, uh, keep an eye on how many uh, turns out we go. There's one, two, and a half. So that's where we started to begin with. Let's go ahead and get our float bowl back in. Take it, slide it in here, 
and then at an angle, go back in so it stays in that channel. And reinstall your pivot. And we just want to tap that back in. Or you can grab it like this with your needle nose. Get to go in. That's good. Then put on your float bowl. Go ahead and mount your uh, adjustment bracket back for idle. And next, we just need to get in our accelerator pump. Feed it through. It only goes in one way. Make sure that those are lined up properly. That little spring. And then just three Phillips head screws hold it back in. Trick is not to let go of it. <laughs> it's that spring will shoot it right up into your face. All right, from here, let's pull that pivot arm out and we'll go ahead and get the main slide and main jet pop back in there. We just need to pull that pin back far enough to get the, uh, the linkage in there. All right, remember we had that thrust washer to contend with as well. So I'm going to go ahead and get it in there and just lay it kind of to the side. Have to be careful threading the uh, the jet into that um, passage down at the bottom. All right. Now we can push that pivot pin back over. Just like that. Line it up for the threads of its screw. And in she goes. With that we can go ahead and um, get our top cover plate now that that slides back in. And we're sure it's working correctly. It looks really smooth. Now we just need to get a couple of hoses connected up. Don't forget about your screen that goes on the uh, the input side for your fuel line. Just slides in there like that. All right. Next, we can go ahead and mount <coughs> the air cutoff valve. Make sure that your O-rings are still in there. There's one there, then there's one down inside that bore. We can get our air lines back on. Actually, I made one little small mistake, but we can correct it here really quick has one little small bracket that goes on the corner one right here. One more hose connection right there. All right. And now she is ready to go back on the machine. So let's get it mounted back on there. First, let's uh, get our throttle cable routed back through. It's easier here if you bring it up, rotate it up, then slide it in. Just like that. You want to make sure that the cable goes down into the groove right down here. So that's where we want it. All right, with the throttle cable on, we just need to get this outer cover back on. All right. Get 
are pushed back into that intake boot. You'll see a little notch up here where my finger is. It needs to align with that corresponding notch on the uh, boot itself. Retighten that clamp at the bottom. Feed that through. All right, now we can put the intake back in. Air box. Tighten up that upper clamp and get the three uh, 10 millimeter air box screws back in place. Here, you got the one at the back that has that little flange on it. And the front two, just the regular ones. No flange or anything like that. That little rivet up front. And don't forget your breather valve that comes off the engine, goes into this little box and goes into the intake. We can go ahead and get our fuel tank remounted. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and connect the hose, turn on the fuel. I'm gonna make sure she's not leaking anywhere. Start her up. And there you go. All right, that pretty much completes this one. At this point, we just need to get all the plastics back on it and she'll be ready to ride. Listen, I appreciate you uh, taking the time to watch us work on this today. If you have any questions or comments, just leave them below. If you need any of the parts that we used, come see us at uh, partzilla.com. And until next time, thanks for watching. <music>